Hey friends, so um, you know in the original um, Hoover vortex Vortexathon video I showed you that uh, Vortex Cyclone unit, I'd taken it out of the cleaner um, and it was just like all bare and naked and we talked about it and we talked through the various cyclone stages and everything. So that's been hanging around in my dining room now for um, weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks. And today I thought, actually, do you know what? It'd be quite interesting to try and do something with that. So I have, and I've made this. Um, so this is now part of my bench back. Um, it's uh, the vortex, the triple vortex system, and it's bucket connected to my bench back. So come, come a bit closer and I'll show you what, what I've done. <laughs> have a closer look at this so what we've got here is the suction hose that runs to the Miele S220 down here um, this 40 year old beast of a vacuum cleaner which just keeps going um, it's quite something actually um, so I cut a hole in the top of the triple vortex system here to put this tube in you can't go too far because you can see there's a cycling stage here so you can't go too far into it because um, otherwise you basically lose a cyclone stage. I've sealed this bit up here with just some tape, really, just, just to put some tape over that. Um, it doesn't seem to uh, affect it too badly. So then we have the triple vortex system itself. Then we've got the original elbows that came out of the vortex. These are actually part of the machine. This part I've glued in place because there's quite a lot of pressure on this. It, it sort of tries to pull out, so that's glued in place. This bit isn't. So it still articulates slightly on this joint. Now you see a problem here. There's no way of attaching the bin to the triple vortex molding. Um, the vacuum cleaner itself does that by use of the uh, rising ring that you, you swivel here, which pushes the bin up. And it's that pressure that keeps the bin sealed with the vortex unit. And I just found this piece of hose I think it's from a vax um, yeah it's something like that and then this is I've literally just done this so we're not you know this isn't particularly great this isn't held in place particularly well um, this is all a bit still uh, still a bit weak but I just basically wanted to show it to you um, and it does work that's the funny thing so if I turn the Miele on <laughs> Kind of see it's, <laughs> I have to I have to turn the meal off because it's so noisy. It's one of the things that I told you in um, oh, those bearings are horrendous uh, in the um, original vortex video, and it's why it had all the foam around it. This unit is so so noisy because of how the air is moving through it, but it does seem to work. Now, how long it'll work is anyone's guess. I will say it really stifles the power of the Miele. I mean, you know, this Miele is a thousand watt twin fan. This moves a lot of air, but when you put it through the um, vortex unit, it really makes a difference. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take this out like so, and I'll run the Miele and then you just listen to how the pitch changes on the vacuum cleaner when I attach it to the vortex. Here we go. It's not horrendously bad at, at this point, but that's probably because the um, uh, the the cone is not stuffed up with dust and dirt right now so that's probably why this is running reasonably well um it's quite interesting because i'm just I'm, I'm like thinking to myself now how long is this going to last how long am i going to put up with this nonsense uh, i have tried this in the past actually i, I tried it with a, a dyson dco4 cyclone unit and it's all right but then you know the bin is not particularly massive um it doesn't go a long way towards keeping your bag clean um, it doesn't maintain suction particularly well even on the Dyson 
system, which is infinitely better than this nonsense from, from Hoover. But I thought what we'll do now is we'll put a bit of dust and dirt on the bench and then we'll try sucking it up. Okay, so I'm going to be really filthy now. So I've got my uh, Dyson V6 here. So this is the machine that I use upstairs um, just for like quick run arounds. Um, so what we'll do is we'll empty the container onto the bench. This is going to be absolutely filthy. We'll, we'll spread it out and then we will attempt to pick it up with the um, Vortex system, the Vortex Miele, the Miele Vortex. That sounds really weird, the Miele Vortex. Right, so let's get this out. Ugh, geez. It's like cat hair and fleas. Okay, come on. Oh God, what was that? <laughs> Whee! Okay, th that'll do for that. Um, let's just get this back together. Okay. Great little cleaners, the V6. I have to say, one of the I've had this five years now. Seriously, one of the best. Absolutely brilliant. Love it. Love it. Now, this is only up here because um, I upgraded to a V8 for downstairs use. Um, and I absolutely love the V8. It's, it is it is better than the V6. I'm, I might do a comparison video, actually. But let's just... Let's just get this out. Let's 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 see. It is mainly cat hair because Podge, my cat, spends a lot of time upstairs. And I whip around and I pick up all her cat hair. But at least I know where this dirt has come from. It's me and the cat rather than somebody else. So that's that's good to know. Now I am curious as to how the vortex is going to cope with this. So this is quite a lot for a vortex. We'll see how it does. We'll go slowly. We're not going to go mad, uh, but yeah, let's see how it copes. Let's break this out a bit more. Okay. I don't want it all just to go in as all one lump because it will block up. This is quite a a tight corner here, and um, the uh, the bore of the tubing is not particularly massive. So, and and that's actually why Hoover put a quick release mechanism on the hose for this. Um, unit here so, so you could get to it easily and you can unblock it easily as well so we've got our cheap and terrible vax hose uh, we can see the vortex unit here i'll turn the mealer on and start sucking this up and then we'll have a look and see what happens in the bin so uh yeah wish me luck here goes <laughs> We didn't do too bad. I think what we'll do now is we'll just um, bring the vortex over here. We'll have a look at it, have a look at the bin, and see what's been caught on the shroud inside. Okay, here we are, up close and personal with the triple vortex system. Actually, whilst we're here, uh, see, look, see this, this, this is um, in, indicative of the problem. Now, okay, now that was a a large amount of hair there you wouldn't normally have that much hair to be sucked up but you can see what's happened it's just it's come in and it's spun round this side 
and it's basically all just got caught here. Now there's nothing to that hair at all. It's very soft. It's cat hair. It's you know it's not rough hair, but it just all starts to get caught on this side. I wonder if there's like a there's there's not much on the shroud, which is pretty good, but I suspect there's like yeah, there's like rough edges here around the side, and if any of that gets caught on it, like here, look, I don't know if you can see that on the on the camera, but this is very rough on this edge. The shroud itself is not got that much on it. Um, and there's there's a fair bit of dust up on the up on the top of the vortex there, but not a huge amount. Obviously, everything has ended up in the bin. Now, just look how look how full that is there. Look, there's the max mark on it. That was essentially just from a Dyson V6, and I think the V6's capacity is half a litre. It's nothing. Um, and look how full that bin is. And all right, it's cat hair, you know, it's not it's not hard stuff. This will compact down. But, you know, you, you look at that and you think, oh my God, you know, there's so much dirt in there. Let's pop this back on. Oh, this, is, ugh, this is where all the dust starts falling out. But yeah, there we go. Oh, I can show you the top now. Now that we're here, look, that's the, that's the hole I drilled. So you can actually see into the triple vortex mechanism. So when the, when the hose goes in the top, it basically abuts with this plastic here. So this isn't a cyclone, this part here. It's not a cyclone. The last cyclone ends just here, just on that lip. And this is a, a V-shaped lip here. So it's like we've got a circular V-shape here um, that drives this cyclone unit. Uh, sorry, this top cyclone here. So yeah, there we go. You know, that's um, again, up close and personal with the vortex unit but I mean it works I, I don't know how long I'll keep this on the, the bench back it's not going to go a great deal away to saving the bags that I use it in the Miele I put uh, he uh, pneumatic HEPA flow bags in the Miele they fit just right you can just about get them snug um, and then the the rubber membrane o over the hole it sort of attaches itself to the internal um, sort of um, well there's a, a a little bit of plastic inside that sort of sticks out about that far about yay far probably about half an inch and it's got a couple of tabs on it and that's where you put the Miele bag on that that's what keeps it in place but there's enough tension in the rubber of the bag to keep the bag in place and it fills the bag chamber quite nicely so the bags stay on that really well and HEPA flows are much better than paper much much better in every way way shape and form um, but of course as we know from experience of these uh, triple cyclone uh, sorry triple vortex units they they let so much dust through that the bag is just going to be acting as the filter um, and the bag is going to get stuffed up with fine dust over time um, the uh, airflow is going to drop um, I mean all right this this is going to catch the big stuff and I suppose there's something to say here that, you know, if I've got something on the bench, I've got like, uh, this is this is from a Hoover Starlight. If I accidentally suck that up with the Miele, um, I'd have to, and I wanted it back, which I definitely would, um, I'd have to go into the bag, I'd have to cut the bag open, rummage through all the dirt and filth of God knows how many vacuum cleaners. But if I've got this in the way, then great, I can just take the bin off and fish it out. But yeah, I don't know. So that concludes our little foray into um, what you can do with a scrap cyclone unit and your workbench. Um, please let me know if any of you have ever done anything like this. I, I, I've done this a few times now. Um, I remember one of my early attempts was with uh, a, a cyclone unit from a Dyson DCO3. And that was absolutely pointless. There was no point in doing that whatsoever because it was, you know, that, that cyclone is so small. Um, you do one other vacuum cleaner and it's full and you have to empty it. And it was just more hassle than it was worth. Um, the DC-04 one was better because it had uh, a larger bin on it. But again, it's awkward. The 04 unit is quite big, it's quite tall. 
Um, so you have uh, the issue of it falling over. Uh, this is quite nice because you can fit a hose onto it quite easily. You can't do that on the DCO4 bins. Um, they are harder because their aperture is a, is a really funny shape. This was quite an easy conversion really. I you drill a hole in the top and stick a hose on the side. Simple. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, if you, if like when we come back to the workshop next time and we're doing a vacuum cleaner up, if you see this here, then I'm still using it. If I'm, if it's not there, then I've probably yeeted it th through the window because I've got fed up of it. But that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Um, it's like a funny little 2.5 uh, vortex video. Um, don't forget to do the usual comment, subscribe, and like. And um, I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.